Dinner party wars. Yoren's going swimming. Three couples compete to outdo each other in the ultimate dinner party showdown. There we go. Whoa. It was completely disgusting. Two experts judge their dinner dues. The trick to doing things like this is like the ordinary to make it extraordinary. And don'ts. It offends me that he is snooping around. They share one goal, to be dinner party war champions. Dinner party warriors are Kristen, also known as Bob, a marketing coordinator, and Sarah, an account manager. Uh, got off to a rough start. We didn't like each other very much to begin with. <laughs> These roommates find their competitive edge in the way they think so much alike. We actually realized that we were the exact same person, which is why we are here today. We are rocking and rolling here. She's gonna be the one that'll be more in the kitchen, and I'll probably be the one that's more entertaining to people. We're gonna be great. You better check yourself at the door, because we're gonna win. Next up are Rob, a partner in a sales company, and Maxine, an insurance agent. This married couple are a foodie force to be reckoned with, because they divide their party skills and conquer. Bob is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, the captain of the team. I'd love to see you work that thing. Maxine loves to make sure it's just the right ambiance. Brilliant. Too bad we have to put food on it. We're going to win because... We have the best chef. And our final duo are Yorn and Davey, a team of teachers married for 10 years. I do enjoy winning. I try to play fairly. These opposites not only attract, they make a fearsome hosting combination. We like to entertain because we like to make sure people are happy, they're fed, they're content, and uh, that they're having a good time. Are you going to do the roti now? I love this. That's the roti. We're going to meet some new people, and we're going to get some good ideas, and, uh, and we're going to win. Yeah. These couples will meet for the first time when they host each other over the course of three competitive dinners. They each get $350 to spend and three hours to deliver. Only one couple can win, and that's up to our judges. Order up. This is Chef Corbin, our executive chef, who always brings his passion for food perfection to the table. He'll be judging the couples on menu selection, food presentation, and of course, taste. And this is Anthea Turner, the UK's perfect housewife, top-selling author, and our ultimate party hostess. She'll be judging the dinner parties on style, etiquette, and entertainment. They'll view each saucy detail using robot cameras. At stake, $1,000 of kitchen goodies and the grand honor to be named Dinner Party War Champions. It's day one, dinner party one, and Sarah and Bob are nervously going over their preparations. I know somebody who's really good at chopping parsley. The evening's menu skips over the conventional first hors d'oeuvre course, and begins instead with an appetizer of mushrooms stuffed with Gruyere cheese. Then comes a main course of beef tenderloin stuffed with mushrooms, served with garlic redskin potato mash and haricot vert in butter. And for dessert, custard trifle with berries. We are starting out with some stuffed mushrooms. Wow, they're, they're cooked already. The recipe said that they can sit for four hours. Is this something that people are going to walk around with a cocktail napkin and eat? No. Or is it going on a plate? It's going to go on a plate. Where are they going to be sitting when they have? At the dinner table. Oh, right. So there's no finger foods? No. no. I'm going to throw you the challenge of come up with something to serve your guests when they arrive. Goat cheese. <laughs> hey, hey, there's an hors d'oeuvre. Mix a little goat cheese, some garlic, some herbs, and stuff it in these tomatoes, and you got an instant hors d'oeuvre. You've got bacon and shrimp. You've got two hors d'oeuvres there. And now their menu starts with hors d'oeuvres of cherry tomatoes stuffed with goat cheese and bacon-wrapped shrimp. You can do this, right? We can do this. We can do this. You don't seem very confident. This is a war! The war is on! Woohoo! Yeah! Now cook your butts off. So when I was looking around, outside looks like you're going to do something now. We're going to do dessert outside. Oh, this is lovely. 
you need a whole load of wood there. And you know, there'll be somebody who comes tonight and it'll be a bloke because they love doing this for some reason. They always go up and say, oh, I'll just go and put a log on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good luck. Thank you. Uh, I think we're leaving you in decent shape. I think you guys need to go cook. Okay, yeah, okay. I think so too. I think so too. All right. <laughs> While the hosts prep, the robot cameras are set to record the dinner table action. And then it's private access only with the confessional cam, where the evening sins are truly revealed. The judges are also prepped to catch all the angles of the dinner party adventure. What, why are we feeling garlic? I don't know, but I want to know where all that garlic is going to go. That's a lot of garlic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 cloves of garlic. Maybe she thinks vampires are coming. Wow. Rob and Maxine are the first to arrive. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hello there. Davy and Yorn are next to show up. Hi, come on in. If we were going to a dinner party and my husband walked downstairs ready to go out in a pair of shorts, I don't know, I, I think it's disrespectful. And Yorn is quick to make himself feel at home. You know what, I'm gonna take my shoes off. I just can't do it. I don't want you to walk around without your shoes on. It's right. nice to meet you all. Cheers. Bob and Sarah's impromptu hors d'oeuvres are served. Grab some um, appetizers. You just bake them a little? Wait, they're talking about those fancy hors d'oeuvres. Mm, very good. tasty. Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad you like them. <laughs> I'll probably like this one. Put a little breadcrumbs on there for crunch. Not bad. Mm. Better than nothing. Very tasty. Although I think they could have um, helped serve them a little more. They're OK, but for a guy, you want to have lots. That's all I'm saying. As Bob entertains in the living room, Sarah is already pulling her tenderloin out of the oven. Don't cover it yet. Do not cover it no, yet. No, 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 no. You know, it just came out of the oven, and she's made another oven. It should just breathe. The guests are led to the table to await the next course's arrival. Oh, I like your centerpiece. Oh, thank you, sir, That's and I pretty. made that this morning. And Yorn decides he should pitch in. Okay. Do you want me to light him for you? Just give me a, I'll do it for you. I know you guys are busy. I'll bring it. What's he doing? What is Yorn doing? It's not your job, Yorn. You don't know these girls. No, 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 no. Actually, they should have done it. Then Yorn jumps from candle duty to telling tales of his many adventures. I traveled for six months when I was a young buck. So I go up to him and I say, uh, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Parlez-vous Francais? He definitely likes attention. He definitely likes to be heard. Yorn has spoken quite a lot, and we haven't heard much from anybody else. Because they should interject. You see, Rob is going to be quite passive, and I don't think he's going to, to interject, is he? And I met these people, and we sat in this, it was a Polish ocean liner. It was the last run it was doing to Montreal. There are two things that are very boring to other people. Discussions about your children and your holidays. Back in the kitchen, Sarah is readying a less than appetizing looking appetizer. Put a sprig of parsley on, put something. Well, and the next course makes its way to the table. Mushrooms stuffed with Gruyere cheese. I came back on a ship from Holland. But Yorn isn't handing the table over just yet. Definitely Yorn um, has a need to uh, make sure you know Yorn. Again, to make a long story short, sorry, I don't want to bore you guys, but this is really cool. I started talking to him, I said, what are you doing? A boisterous guest so isn't automatically a problem, but if they start taking over, somebody has to shut them down. Called the Brotherhood, the brothers, and they were hippies. Bon appetit. Anyway, sorry, I know I'm talking oh, here, but um, bon it has a play in it that we wrote on the ship. It was really kind of cool. Wow, that's really good. Oof. Look at them. You know what they look like? They look like some sort of ice. <laughs> Funnily enough, that's far more attractive for me to look at. They're soggy. Yeah. Other than the flavor of the Greer cheese, th there's no flavor in here. I wouldn't just serve two on a plate. You never serve two round things on a plate like that. Things always look better in threes. And the mushroom caps, I thought, were delicious. Tasted really good. I love the cheese that they used in it. Out in the kitchen, Bob and Sarah are hunkering down over their next course. You know, they're really good together, the, these girls. They obviously have a great relationship. They're not organized, though, I hate to tell you. I don't like to steam green beans. Look at them, they're gonna discolor. I bet you they're gonna turn brown and they're gonna be soggy. 
Back in the dining room, Yorn has gone from commanding the table to surveying the host house. It offends me the fact that he is snooping around. Sit down at the table. What is he doing? These people have graciously invited you into their home, and this would really annoy me. I don't like to call it snooping. I like to find out about the other side of people. I did see that he was snooping around. I tried to act like I wasn't seeing that, but I did see that. Then Yorn snooping takes him to the kitchen. What are they doing? This guy's a problem. Go, just don't get in the kitchen if I'm doing a dinner party. And he wants part of the action. Are you going to light up the fire too? Yes. I love it. I think he's trying to be polite, but he's also trying to stir some things up. Well, you give me the match and I'll make the fire. She needs to stand up and say, can you please get out of the kitchen? And from Corbin's mouth to Sarah's ears. Um, no, actually, if you want to grab a seat, I'm going to be two minutes and I'll have everything out. But thank you so much for the help. You know, I, I like Sarah. I'm going to light your fire outside. He's not going anywhere near that fire. Sarah moves on to her side dishes, but the judges aren't encouraged. The only time you would use this amount of garlic is if it was roasted first. This is going to be the most garlicky potato. In the land! Yikes. Oh, God. We've got big, gloopy, starchy. This is what happens when you overmix potatoes. The starch from the potato yeah. gets kind of gluey. I hate to say this, but this is not dinner party war material. This is more dinner at grandma's. That's what this is. Supper at Nana. We're now putting untoasted almond slivers on the bean. Why? And when Sarah gets to her plating, the situation doesn't get much better. When you have just three things that go on the plate, yep. you've got to showcase it in a way that makes it look unbelievable. Absolutely. Not just soup kitchen style. But presented to the judges liking or not, the main course is served. Beef tenderloin stuffed with mushrooms, served with garlic red skin potato mash and haricot ver. Very, very tasty. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite vegetables. I love green beans. Not these green beans. Those are overcooked. If one didn't know better, you would guess that these were frozen green beans. Yeah, do you know you're... Yes! Oh, my gosh. You just had gum surgery, and you're worried that a herd of vampires are coming. Wow! No. It's, it's the most beautiful cut of meat. The only thing great oh. about this dish is the fact that it's a premium beef tenderloin. Mm. It's under-seasoned. It's got a gloopy, mushy mess in the middle, and it's very bland. I thought the beef was a little bit rare. I happen to like a lot of garlic, but not my mashed potatoes. In the middle of the main, Yorn decides to shift from storytelling to a pointed 20 questions. So is there, like, a, a guy in your life that likes your dog? Do you leave the dog behind? Would you have to have a guy like your dog? Are there any jealousy issues? Yorn has asked so many personal questions at the table. Like, you don't <laughs> go clubbing with the dog, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> In fact, I think he's just lost his fire starting privileges. Come on. What is it about boys and fires? Me man, me make fire. Then Bob and Sarah go outside and find a pleasant surprise. You guys. <laughs> because yours is thinking he's going to do it. He's oh, going to oh. be so disappointed. <laughs> Since you guys have this under control, we're going to yeah, head back don't, don't in. Worry. Yeah, don't worry. Look, he's going to come out. He's going to come out any minute. With the fire roaring outside, Yorn ducks out back and gets himself a blazing disappointment. Very nicely done, although I'm a little miffed. I heard that Corbin and Anthea lit the fire. They were roaming around and wanted to light a fire under somebody. I'm not sure. Ah, ah, ah. Is there a, a fire poker here? Don't wreck that fire. Leave it. But Yorn still makes sure to put a few of his own fingerprints on the fire and the rest of the guests come out to join Yorn around the fireplace. Oh, nice fireplace. It's gorgeous. When I'm doing anything outside, I always, on the back of all of the chairs, I put a wrap. And Sarah follows them with the evening's dessert course, custard trifle with berries. This always goes over very well when I make it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some of the best trifles. You know what this is? What is it? This is store-bought. Angel food cake, ripped up with some berries and some cream. This is a take on a traditional trifle. It doesn't taste like fresh cream to me. Non-traditional as this is, it is their best course. 
The trifle was great. I love fresh berries. And the party comes to a close. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Well, listen, they, they worked hard. Well, no, they did. They're young, and their wine was good, and the dessert not yeah. bad. Everybody's chatted, everybody's got on. We've started to work out the characters. And the girls are delightful hostesses. Were you disappointed that you weren't able to light the fire? I decided I, if I couldn't light the fire outside, I tried to light the fire with the conversation. I don't know how well that came across. So how have you enjoyed yourself this evening? Very enjoyable, but it wasn't what I, you know, it just didn't run the way I thought it was. Do you think you're better than this? Well, Bob's going to crush them with his food, and I will crush them with service. It's day two, dinner party two, and Rob and Maxine are running down their final party preparations. Ordering. You rang, and I'm here. Oh, my god. <laughs> We're here. First on the menu are hors d'oeuvres of Mexican oysters on the half shell and bruschetta. Next are two appetizers. The first, a Thai curry soup with squash, pear, and croutons. And the second, an arugula salad served with Asiago Frico cups. The main course is grilled salmon covered with a garlic black bean sauce, served with a grilled vegetable medley. And for dessert, English cobbler with berries. Who does the cooking? Oh, Bob does. Yeah, but you're doing jobs, aren't you? Have you looked in the other room? I want to go and look at your creation oh, on the table. Oh, yes, okay. you do. Thank you. Aha, yeah. this is very black. And I think that the way that you've got the orange flowers, which obviously show up beautifully against the black, they're all very nice. I would, however, I'd sort of pop those on there, just to break up the whiteness of your charger. Great. Show me your salmon. Will you present it on one board on the table? Because the whole point of plank salmon is seeing it on the plank. That's what people love. If you just tell them, they're gonna go, mm -hmm. you take a nice sharp knife and you cut it on the board and then you preserve it from the board, then they're gonna go, wow. So you have seven courses, that's pretty, pretty aggressive. Do you think you're gonna get that done in three hours? We are. We have, but you do dinner parties a lot, do you? That's right. Yeah, so they're, they're a tried and tested formula here. As the judges take their place, the hosts busy their prep. Simmering soup. I hope he purees that. The first guests, Bob and Sarah, are about to arrive, but not before they pre-game a little in the driveway. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> Do they not realize that there is so much booze in this house? Well, I think we're ready. Ta-da! Hello, <laughs> ladies. Hi, Our new favorite Bob. friends. Oh, Davy isn't far behind with an almost unrecognizably cleaned up Yorn. Well, hello! Yorn, you're all dressed up tonight. I wore my tie. Yes. <laughs> you even got a haircut. And a shave. With an ambitiously large menu, Rob and Maxine launch right into the first of the hors d'oeuvres. Oysters on the half shell drenched in tequila. As before, Yorn jumps in before anyone. All right. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I, I think that when you're going to have a fresh oyster, you experience the fresh oyster and the yeah. flavor and the sweetness of that oyster. I think when you mask it with something like tequila, you don't appreciate the whole oyster. And some of the oysters are sliding down smooth, while others are hitting a clammy snag. No gag reflex. <laughs> I'm glad you had yours after I had mine. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There we go. I think we should have one. Nope. I can't, I don't know, I can't. Uh, yes, you are. No, I can't, I can't. I can't do it. Are they good oysters? They were good that they were cold on ice. Not bad. The oysters didn't actually come off smoothly, and maybe that's something they could have uh, taken care of. It was completely disgusting. It went down. <laughs> the first dinner bell rings. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, would you follow me, please? And Rob shepherds everyone to the table to await hors d'oeuvre number two, bruschetta. Mmm. Mmm. It's very fresh. It needs just a smidge of salt. Mm. But now we try it. Mmm. Tomatoes are sweeter, mm. much better. The bruschetta was amazing. It was actually quite delicious. Bruschetta, it's messy and awkward. This is the problem I always have with bruschetta when it's a big piece of bread. The eating of it isn't elegant. It would have been better suited served with the oysters. Yeah. 
And as the last bites of bruschetta are being swallowed. Maxine, where's my bell? It's okay, we got more bell. Look at all the bells! It's freaky! They got loads of bells! And there is more. Oh my god, it's Christmas! Are oh. we in a fire hall? <laughs> Evacuate! And the bell that keeps ringing, I don't know what that bell is about. Order up. The bells are ringing and the first appetizer is raced to the table. Thai curry soup with squash, pear, and crouton. Thank you. This is really tasty. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. I'm really enjoying this. This is great. Oh, good. I would have liked it pureed. I have to tell you, look at it. It's kind of watery. It looks unfinished. Spicy. It's absolutely gorgeous. That'll put some... Load a new pencil. That too. And I love the heat in it. I like the croutons. I will say this, so far this soup, the oysters, the bruschetta, everything is way better than last night. Oh my goodness me. The soup was very, very, very spicy. Like borderline too spicy, but I can handle it. In the middle of diving into the soup, Table Talk turns to diving into Rob and Maxine's pool. Yarn, I was just checking out the backyard in the swimming pool. I hope you brought your bikini. Yarn doesn't need a bikini. He'll go in the pool. Commando? Uh, she's mad at me because I said I'd do it, and I will. I mean, I, I know oh, it will be going, it will go against it, yeah. all party etiquette, I understand. <laughs> I think he's too afraid of me to go naked. But I have been wrong before, so who knows? I think it was that tequila shot. Everybody's We are at dinner party number two, and everyone's got a little bit more energy. I think they know each other a little better. They They've got a little bit more zing, and I think this is good. I genuinely love this table. And as everyone is putting final soup spoonfuls in their mouths, Yorn is calling for more of the special oyster sauce. We need some tequila in here, OK? <laughs> Let's go. But Yorn's tequila call to arms is answered with a second appetizer. Arugula salad served in Asiago Frico cups. <laughs> Thank you. It's like so pretty. Yeah, you can eat the bowl too. I think to make these little baskets, beautiful to make. The vinaigrette is nice. Beautiful lemon. Mm -hmm. Lemon and arugula are a good marriage. Tell me about the little basket. Well, what he's done, he's taken shredded or grated Asiago cheese, put yeah. it on a baking tray. Baked it in the oven and then molded in like a muffin tin. But he's just done too much cheese. You gotta sprinkle a little bit less. Yeah. I think the presentation is beautiful. The trick to doing things like that is taking the ordinary to make it extraordinary. Yeah. Um, the citrus um, vinaigrette was nice on it. I didn't actually like the cheesy bowl. There's a lot of salt, and I know cheese is salty, but uh, there was a little bit much. Still deep in the salad, Yorn throws down a tequila gauntlet in front of Sarah and Bob. I'll tell you what, if she has one, I, I will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you tonight. Okay. I'll have one too, oh don't leave me out of it. Let's go for it, I'm ready for it. Yorn's going swimming. Back in the kitchen, Rob leisurely preps his salmon main. It's all about the lather, yes. The whole thing about cedar plank salmon, it's about having that smoky cedar sweet flavor infused into the fish. When you mask it with all those beans and that sauce, you don't get the full appreciation of it. I, I have to tell you, I'm a little disappointed. Rob flies his fish to the barbecue and waits. Meanwhile, back at the house, Sarah is conspiring with Maxine to pull the bait and switch on Yorn. We'll give him shots of tequila okay. and us shots of water. So she's doing water, water and tequila. <laughs> OK, Yorn, you ready? OK, all at the same time. Lick, drink, suck. I love it. <laughs> Look at the girls. I love them. Look at this. Aren't we good actresses? Who would have known? Rob is readying his salmon and contending with the presentation. See, now what I would do is I'd clean all this off and I'd put nice sliced lemons all the way around, some fresh herbs, fresh cilantro would be nice. Back at the table, it's tequila trick round two. Are you ready for a shot? Absolutely. Oh. Has he not understood this? But before the Mexican standoff can hit its playoff round, the games are interrupted by the main course. Grilled salmon served with a grilled vegetable medley. 
Wow, this is so good. It smells good. I'm going for the fish. I don't taste the cedar. The whole point of planking is that you should be able to get the cedar to infuse into the product. Mm -hmm. You don't. All I taste is that garlicky black bean stuff, mm. which is good, but not cedar. I think it's beautiful. It, it, it's a very, very nice taste. Salad's it, delicious, or the it, vegetables. It, it is. Grilled vegetables with almonds. Very nice. The salmon was good. I, I think with the vegetables, there was way too much onion. The salmon was to die for. Can't complain at all. This. <laughs> was amazing, though, by the way. It was delicious. Yeah, it was. Great. Good. Glad you liked it. The warm glow of salmon has begun to settle, but Maxine is ready to restart the Tequila Olympics. They're having another shot first. OK. Yeehaw! Actually, this is quite funny, and the girls are being very clever here, but I don't think they should push it any further. You girls, I got to tell you, you're a lot of fun. <laughs> We've never been told that before. <laughs> All of the shots have gotten Yorn's mind wandering from the table, but this time, Yorn isn't snooping around the house. He's tickling the ivories. Can you teach me? And instead of getting a piano lesson, Sarah isn't finished pranking Yorn. I don't got it. Maybe we need to, like, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! I've been had. Good one, buddy. High five. She <laughs> totally got me. Cheers I'm... to your going swimming. Froze it, my Froline. <laughs> so the tequila was a bit of a strategy, and I think it played out pretty well tonight. And the guests are led outside to await dessert and a potential yarn performance. Look how gorgeous. They have a beautiful backyard. They do, don't they? And good old yarn doesn't disappoint. Woo! Woo! There's a pool at a party. It could be 15 degrees Celsius. I'm jumping in. He had to, didn't he? He just had to. Thank you, ladies. Oh, God. And as Yorn dries off, dessert is served. An English cobbler. Oh, they're doing dessert outside. Oh, how lovely. Jesus. Seriously, though, I really like pools. So. What's the salt in it? It doesn't taste sweet. It's not good ice cream. It's also a bit runny. I think it's the pastry. The pastry's got too much salt. No, it's not, it's not right. No, it's not right, that is. I feel like the dessert was a little bit plain. It was good, but I mean, it just wasn't fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you for being here. OK. I've got good things to say about more or less everything, apart from the cobbler. Can we just say it's... that's two dinner parties, 0 for 2 for English desserts. Do you think that you made the party tonight? I feel like we 100% made the party tonight. I think <laughs> we still have a good shot to win. I have to say, as a bystander, I thought the girls took the entertainment flag tonight. If you look at it, I put on the tequila challenge. I put the challenge on to them, and they played by my game. Oh, oh right. Definitely yes, you. I, you know, absolutely. He outwitted them on that yeah. one. It's day three, dinner party three, and Davy and Yorn are dotting their I's and crossing their T's on their school-themed party. I have to put the ice in the bucket with the beer and everything so it stays cold. I gotta do that at the of right time. Of course he has, of course he's gonna oh go put the ice in the bucket okay. to make sure it all stays cold. Okay. Yeah. The Guyanese-style meal starts with appetizers of fish cakes, haluri, a potato ball, Davy corn with a spicy rub, and spicy sauteed shrimp. The main course is lamb curry with potatoes and basmati rice, accompanied by roti bread with chicken and vegetable chow mein. Dessert is sweet rice with mango slices. It smells really good in here. Frankly, oh, oh. this is very similar to Rob's salad. I yeah. know, that that's what we were saying, saying. We too. We didn't want to repeat, want to repeat, want to repeat it. Yeah, and it would look like you're copying him. Like salad is not that big. It's not a big deal. Get rid of it. Okay. Get rid. Okay. Um, it looked like you've got various things set up, like a bit of a playground out there. What we're going to do is they're coming to school. Uh, and they're going to have a whole program. You know, you've got quite a lot going on with your playground out there, all the food in here, there's going to be lots of chat, da, 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 da. three hours, we'll go like that. We're going to go and have a look in the playground. You should try the swing. I'll push you. Corbin! Corbin, no! 
as the judges take their place, the hosts continue with their prep. So now she's got the shrimp cooked already. I'm a little concerned on that one because usually you do it to order. Look at the corn, how charred it is, and it's getting kind of wrinkly. That makes me think of a buffet. I like the fact that she's putting in that spice, that paste of heat, and then rubs it with lime. That's good. Outside, Rob and Maxine are the first to arrive. Oh. Well, hello. hello. How are you? Welcome to our abode. And Yorn leads them to the backyard to explain the evening's theme. You guys are going to school, and it's going to be quick and fast, efficient like teachers do, and we're hopefully <laughs> going to have you graduate at the end. I think they've upped their game. I sense that. He's being a very good host. He is, isn't he? Before the drinks are poured, Yorn teaches a PhD course in beer bottle popping. These come straight from Flensburg, which is the hometown of my family. You gotta be able to get it just right. Wow! wow. Did you see what he just did? Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's nice beer. With Sarah and Bob nowhere to be seen, Davey decides to move the evening along anyway. I'm gonna get you guys some appetizers because I don't know when our other guests are gonna be here. Uh, where are the girls? I think they're doing the right thing. Bob and Sarah are late. What can you do? You might as well just carry on. Hors d'oeuvres are served. Fish cakes and polluri. Potato balls in mango chutney. Delicious. Yeah. I'm just trying all the little sort of accompaniments. Um, oh, it's dry. I know. It's like it was done yesterday. Because it was fried and sat and sat and sat and then reheated. Oh, Mmm, these are good. No, lovely, beautiful. I think this is a case of being over-prepared. The appetizers I enjoyed. I found a couple of them kind of uh, rubbery. Then, finally, Bob and Sarah arrive with little fanfare. Hi! How you doing? <laughs> good, how are you? Great. How about, I'm so sorry we're late? They haven't said that. With everyone finally arrived... We are splitting up the teams tonight. Yorn pairs up the guests... Students, and school yeah. is in session. Sorry, I don't mean to be too much of a, uh, of a schoolmaster, but we do want to move on with our activities so we can have yep. our learning and fun in the school day. We're going to be making our team buttons Ooh. and team flags or banners. He did a lot of explaining. We want to get this done quick so we can move on to phys ed after the food because we want to work it off. How much stress is this going to be when you just come for a relaxing dinner party? I like how they've paired everybody up with different people. When you're ready to make your buttons, I'll show you how to do it. It's very easy. It's like top hat chef. I am a little ray of sunshine. Look at that, huh? We are ladies. done. Thank you very much. After the arts and crafts class, and all the flags and buttons. I think this is fun, but there's just I too much. I think this is too much of it now. Way too much. It's time for foosball recess. Drop the ball. Kick it. Kick it, she <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> well, they're definitely having fun. And with team spirit running high, the schedule says snack time. Bring your duotangs with you to class. The appetizer course makes its table debut sauteed spicy shrimp and roasted Davy corn with secret spicy rub. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, we don't eat like this every night. <laughs> it tastes pretty good, right? Mm. The problem with it is... It's dry. You've got to really chomp down to try and get anything out of it. It's a shame because the flavors are there. Shrimp's slightly overcooked. No, no, no. It has a buffet kind of feel. But the pepper cooked to perfection. Spice blend is very nice. If the shrimp were served hot, mm -hmm. much better. The shrimp and the vegetable was good. The corn could have been a little warmer. As the appetizers are cleared away, Yorn opens the gifts for teacher. So this will be good. It's time! Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I could just put that on now. Oh, a proper tie. There's your duotang back. Oh, I'll lose the duotang, because I'm over the duotang. <sighs> Class is over. Then the main course is served. Lamb curry with chicken chow mein, potatoes, roti, and basmati rice. Very tasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. 
presentation. This is not dinner party war presentation. This is all you can eat buffet for $4.99. Here you go. I'd like to try the lamb first. This is the lamb, isn't it? Yes. Flavor's nice. Rice has absolutely no flavor. It's just steamed plain rice. This is the Guyanese version of chow mein noodles. Uh -huh. It's so bland. The roti is the best thing on the plate. Yeah, it is. Love the roti. It's a sort of thing that fills you up, but you wouldn't remember it. The chow mein was pretty good. The rice was okay. And before the main course is even over, it's back to school far too soon. Would you like to choose it, one of these 3D shapes here? Yorn throws out another school-themed game, this one about geometry and compliments. When you're in the middle of dinner, I'm not trying to learn my shape. Use words to describe and compare your partner and the shape. There was so much focus on the games that it took away from what everybody's meal. OK, my partner's like a cube, because a cube is the shape of a suitcase. And he's traveled a lot. OK, I chose the sphere because a sphere has only one face or many faces, but they're all beautiful. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an octagonal-based pyramid. I chose the octagonal-based pyramid. So I'd learn what it is. <laughs> Dessert chases the final class away. Sweet rice with mango slices. This should be served in a bowl, because when you put rice pudding on a plate, it goes, it, it does this. Plop. Well, what that stuff. Right. This mango, very nice. Love the mango. This is like daycare food. Since we're at school, we should have daycare food. <laughs> la, la, la. Do you know what my mum used to do? She used to go like that. <laughs> that was the first time I've ever had rice pudding. I was a little nervous, to be honest, but it was pretty good. School is finally out, so everyone hits the playground in the backyard. <laughs> pump it, Maxine, pump it. Look at this girl go. She's good. Each of the tables, all the parties have been very consistent. Fun, fun, fun. See, now this is nice where the problem people. is. This is the problem. All three had a great party. Yeah. It's up to me now to decide. You, you're going to be the big bad wolf tonight. And now for the judging. Only one couple is going to go away with over a thousand dollars of cookware, but more importantly, the bragging rights to say, I am the dinner party war champion and hold this trophy up high. Wow. Oh, special. <laughs> special. Bob and Sarah, please step forward. Now, you probably want to see what they thought of your party. I thought the beef was a little bit rare. I happen to like a lot of garlic, but not my mashed potatoes. They're OK, but for a guy, you want to have lots. That's all I'm saying. Well, let's go through your menu. Let's see what we thought. You didn't have appetizers. You had nothing. You were just going to serve them the sangria and call it a day. But you came up with the cherry tomatoes with the goat cheese and the bacon wrapped shrimp. Pretty good. So overall, I'd give you a big pass on that one, your main course. The beef tenderloin, the best part of the meal. Really? The cut. The beef tenderloin, the cut, was the best part of the meal. It wasn't what you did. It wasn't what you did with the beef. Because the no. stuffing, it was this, this cavernous slice of meat with some sort of brown stuff oozing out of it. The beans. The beans were soft. The potatoes were over whipped. Let's move straight to your dessert. The traditional English trifle. Yes. It tasted pretty good. Yes. In fact, I thought it was your best course. Do you know, you two are great at a party. You are great guests, and you are great hosts as well. You had the most difficult job because you had to bring everybody together from the beginning. And I think you coped really, really well. Uh, Maxine and Robert. The oysters didn't actually come off smoothly. It was completely disgusting. Bruschetta is messy and awkward. Now, you were very ambitious with your menu. You had seven dishes in total. Probably the most ambitious out of all the couples. Your squash pear Thai soup, very flavorful. Perfect amount of heat. The croutons, not traditional, but they were very tasty and we enjoyed them. Arugula salad in the cheese cups, unique way of presenting the salad, very simple. We both enjoyed it, good job. The salmon, 
I love a good plank salmon. And one of the things that I was most looking forward to was that scent of cedar kind of infusing into the fish. That did not happen. It was masked by that garlicky bean sauce that was drenched all over the entire fish. And I thought that it was a miss. You're probably one of the best tag teams we've ever come across. You never left your guests. You did the whole flip-flop thing between the kitchen, between Maxine doing what she was doing and you, Rob, doing what you were doing. And it was just, you know, it was like dancing, it was. There were many aspects of your party. It was just a joy to watch. Last but not least, Yorn and Davey. The appetizers, I found a couple of them kind of uh, rubbery. Rice was OK. There was so much focus on the games that it took away from what everybody's meal. Your menu was the traditional Guyanese experience. Your appetizers were authentic. The fish cakes were my favorite. I thought they were quite nice. Your first course, the shrimp, they were slightly chewy. And I think, again, it was because they were partially cooked, and then you cooked them again. I thought it was authentic. I thought you had the right idea. But unfortunately, it was a miss. Your main course. You got caught up with preparing it too far in advance. You probably made the curry the day before, which is a smart thing to do, because it does allow those flavors to come through. But when you presented it, it seemed a little bland for me. But it was authentic, and I appreciate that you carried the theme through. Dessert. Finally, the color came on the plate. The mango was there. I love that part of the dessert. Overall, pretty good. When I was at junior school, I only wished that you'd been my teachers. You kept it going, you kept the pace going. You know, if I've got to criticize you, you probably tried to pack too much in, and, and it was a wall of information and activity. But you know, you gave it your all, and I love people with enthusiasm. Now it's time to give you our scores. Sarah and Bob, your score on food is six out of 10. You're good hosts, but you are consistently even better guests. I'm going to give you seven. Wow. Which gives you a combined score of 13 out of 20. Rob and Maxine, a few hits and a few misses, but a pleasant surprise. Your score on food, seven and a half out of 10. And I'm going to give you seven out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 14 and a half out of 20. That means Bob and Sarah are out of the running. Davy and Yorm, you cooked everything ahead of time and it was your downfall. Your score on food, seven out of 10. Yorn and Davy need an eight for presentation to win. You spent a little too much time in the classroom. I'm going to give you also seven out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 14 out of 20. Which means the winners of Dinner Party Wars for this edition is Maxine and Robert. Yes! Yes! novelist at cooking so you know it was fun and by novelist she means novice yeah <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time it was a fantastic experience we met some really nice people yes and we did